You know, Austin is is a vibe, man. You can feel it when you come here. You you can feel that it's a very energetic and alive city. Right now, I think it's one of the venues really opening to Latin music from the rest of the world, and I think that's a beautiful thing. The Austin community has like a real genuine authenticity to it. People don't really care who you are, they just want to get to know you and support you as an artist. There are powerful Latinx subcultures with a unique heartbeat shaping every city in the U.S. A heartbeat formed by a group of Americanos who are embracing the roots and shaping the future. A long lineage of Latinx artists, chefs, musicians, and creators helping to make their towns a one-of-a-kind place to explore. This is the U.S. through their eyes. Welcome. The Latino scene in Austin right now is really growing into something big as far as like Latino music and Latino sounds. Me llamo Nicolás Sánchez, toco el bajo y canto. Yo me llamo Jaime Ospina, yo soy el cantante, el frontman de Superfónicos. Can you say suelta with me? Suelta! Superfónicos started in about 2014 to kind of explore Afro-Colombian roots music. And the music that we play, the kind of like rhythms and the kind of like sounds that we're bringing, we are always like helping the people connect with the earth, with the primal, with the ancestral. I grew up in Dallas, and anytime I wanted to go see a touring band that was worthwhile, they would skip Dallas and go to Austin. So I would come to Austin, and I was like, there's some, something going on here. There's a lot of wonderful bands that come through here that are, you know, not just indie rock and country. There's all kinds of great Latino culture all throughout the city. Yes, and people is coming. People is coming to the shows. The new generation of Americans are really falling in love with the wonders of like the culture. It's happening and it's happening in Austin, not only with the Latino community, but with like the international community. There's a, a lyric in one of our songs, Rio Negro, it goes, El paraíso es un lugar en la mente de cada ser. Paradise is a place in your mind. For me and, and the rest of the band, I think we view playing and performing in that sense that you kind of let loose and disappear into yourself. Para mí, reconectar con la naturaleza, reconectarnos entre nosotros, unidad, reunirnos, comunidad, it's, it's all about that. Yo no miro diferencia en una persona de México y una persona de Estados Unidos. Para mí, somos la misma sangre, somos mexicanos. La cherrería comenzó en los 30s o 40s. Borrancho, Hacienda, Hacienda, se juntaban y comenzaron a, a competir uno, uno contra el otro. Ay, mira mi caballo, está mejor que el tuyo, o mira lo que hace mi caballo, mira lo que hago yo. Y así no se fue y fue creciendo y se fue hasta que se hizo un deporte. Mi nombre es Roberto Chavira y soy presidente de la Asociación de Charros El Herrero aquí en Austin. La charrería so, es un deporte que está muy bonito. Uh, lo que me gustó que este deporte este, representa uh, la cultura uh, mexicana. Esta cultura, esta tradición, uh, nosotros no cambiamos, seguimos usando la misma uniforma que se usaba allá en aquellos días. Sombreros, chaparreras, botines, espuelas, moño, todo, todo eso no cambia. La charrería está creciendo mucho aquí en Austin. Ya hay muchos este, niños, o sea, mucha juventud que han sido parte de las generaciones de los papás que ya son de aquí de Estados Unidos, ellos. Y el deporte es el mexicano, no, no digo que no. No puede uno discriminar. Aquí en el rancho este, aquí no le cerramos la puerta a nadie. A mí no me importa qué color seas. Te si eres humano y, 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 y tienes en tu corazón, este, están las puertas abiertas. Uno de mis dones es, este, como te digo, quiero educar al público, quiero enseñar y educar el, el público y la, y la juventud, porque sin la juventud, la charrería no va a existir aquí en Austin. The Latino scene, before it represented more of a workforce, and now with the millennials and stuff, I think we're realizing that we have a lot of influence. And I think that we're starting to use that influence. My name is Rolando Garza. I started cooking at a very early age with my father, you know, helping him peel onions and stuff like that. You know, I was his sous chef. 
Good food was around a lot in my family. You know, my grandma made tortillas from scratch. My late grandma, I feel like it keeps her alive in my mind because I think about her every time I'm making these foods and, I, and I'm, I'm working with these flavors and I feel honored that they pass these things down to me. When I went vegan in my hometown, there wasn't a lot of food options. And so what I did is figure out how they prepared stuff for meat and emulated that with vegetables, grains, beans, and stuff like that. And so what I'm doing is introducing veganism in a new light. When people eat my food, what I want them to walk away with is a different perspective, a different idea on what vegan food is. I Love Video is very special because aside from being one of the world's oldest and largest video stores in the country, it's just full of anything and everything you can imagine cinema, from toys, memorabilia, etc. 1940s Japanese cinema, boom, they got it. If you want to find the most niche films, you can find it here. My name is E.J. Enriquez, I'm a cinematographer. My formal name is Eduardo Enriquez Jr. It's kind of an interesting combo because, you know, in Spanish surnames, I wouldn't even have the name Junior. I would be Eduardo Enriquez Rios. So I kind of have this, like, journey of kind of realizing, like, I am a bridge point between my before Latino identity and this new emerging one here in the States. I think cinematography really gets to the heart of what people just essentially see. It's, like, literally life in motion. I think my creative process as a cinematographer encapsulates a lot of different things. I really want to get to the heart of the story. A lot of people just think about shop talk with cameras and lenses and lights, and I really just want to think about what really would portray and advance the story in its most pure form. I think as a Latino, so those, those values that have been instilled in me are obviously like hardworking ethics and whatnot, and also loyalty, dedication. I think that really blends well into filmmaking because you're in the trenches with a lot of people for a lot of long hours because my parents had to work so hard for where they are that it kind of was ingrained in me that like, hey, you need to keep working hard. Make sure that you can get to where you need to go regardless of whatever anyone says or anyone does. You have control over your future. I think Austin's a very special place for filmmakers because of that community. It's very small, but it's very enriching. There's a certain hustle here that is kind of chill. You can still do what you want and grind and all that, but you can kind of do it at your own pace, which I really like. No matter what, the Latino roots in, in Tejas are just always going to be there. We're obviously very vocal people. We know what we like, we know what we don't like, and we will tell you about that. The future is very Latino in Austin. Yo por ser nacido aquí me dicen que soy mexicano americano y por eso yo estoy orgulloso de eso. Es bonito ser uh, para mí. I think Austin is becoming one of those like big cities that people are going to think about as far as like Latino music and Latino sounds. Latinos are coming here very fast rate and are feeling at home here, you know, and comfortable. <laughs>